Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of the Brand Builder Show. Today, we're going to be talking all things conversion rate optimization, optimizing your Shopify store specifically for greater conversions, to make more money, to use your ad spend better. And uh, to talk through that, I am joined by Carl. Carl is tearing it up on Twitter, doing these great breakdowns of brands, and I've been loving his breakdowns. And, uh, and so I reached out to him and asked him to come on the show to chat through this topic. Carl, thanks for joining me on the show today pleasure to be here ben thanks so much for the intro no it's uh it's gonna be good to chat through this stuff because you uh what i love about what you do is you take a brand that i assume hasn't invited or asked you to do this and you just kind of do a step-by-step breakdown of what you would improve about their site for better conversion rate they're not asking you to do this right no no they're not it's just you're just doing it just to kind of try and show what can be done and it's genius because i you know i I don't know if it's actually kind of helped you get those uh brands as clients but it's definitely helping you you know create awareness on twitter uh, you know about this topic so uh no hats off to you man um tell us a bit about yourself uh you know your journey into e-commerce what you're doing now give us a bit of the backstory for sure so Carl, 23 years old, uh, born and raised in Germany, currently living in Hamburg, a uh, beautiful city in northern Germany. Um, for me, my whole journey started when I was 16. Uh, I had my first steps on the kind of making money online niche where I was just buying and reselling in limited sneakers like Yeezy Boost, Jordan, Supreme, back then when it was, was still like a huge high. Um, so those were my first steps. Then I had my first brand. I believe like around four years ago now, um, where I was just saying stuff online, like um, wireless chargers, phone cases, had, had my online store, did Amazon FBA, and just literally tried out everything myself. So I set up the store, did email marketing, SEO, Amazon PPC, logistics, packaging, pictures, everything that you could imagine, I just did it myself before I would give it to an agency to do it because I just wanted to have this hands-on experience. For me, it was really like a learning project. And what was stuck in with me is that um, I hired a freelancer, Lars, and he did this whole CRO for my store. So he basically optimized my store, increased conversion rate, increased average order value and revenue. Um, And he's now my (laughs) co-founder. So that's how we started. Um, I just met him back then when he was a freelancer. We started working together on the store. Um, I really, really liked it. And for me, always, um, my passion was really psychology, understanding what motivates me, what motivates others. And when he came around and we started working, I understood that CRO is basically just psychology and neuromarketing applied to e-commerce. So for me, it was like two words colliding uh, from my huge uh, passions. Um, So that really stuck with me. Um, And that's how we kind of grew into becoming friends, started with the agency and uh, started taking on the first clients two and a half years ago. Now, time is running really, really fast. So that's why I'm checking the date. (laughs) But it was uh, two and a half years ago during like the first COVID lockdown. Yeah. And you're just 23. Geez, you're making me feel old, man. All of this uh, e-commerce experience at the age of 23. (laughs) It's insane. Um, So we will link to the, um, we'll link to some of the uh, breakdowns that you've done in the description because what you said about psychology, using psychology to help with conversion rate, I think is really comes through in those in those teardowns because you, you know, there's things like showing uh, trust with reviews and loads of stuff in there that yeah, well, I'd love for people to see some of these breakdowns you've done. So we'll link to those. Um, so let's jump into the questions. And obviously you, you're tearing it up with the agency, growing massively, uh, you know, getting lots of clients for obvious reasons. But in terms of the people that are listening that are maybe be you know early on in their journey with e-commerce let's talk about conversion rate optimization um you know what exactly is it when you come into a store what are you trying to do with regards to conversion rate optimization and why should e-commerce small medium growing e-commerce brands why should they care about it for sure so a couple of questions into one so i just start with the first half conversion rate optimization basically means increasing your conversion rate and average order value so that you make more revenue of the same ad spend, right? So just imagine you have 100 people coming to your store, like you push traffic to a page and 3% of that convert. Then you have three buyers and conversion rate optimization basically increases the number to like four out of 100 people or five out of 100 people, for example. 
Um, so that's CRO. Um, I like to give this analogy uh, of a real world example. So I ask this people when I talk about CRO, like, do you rather go into like a really cluttered store where you have to um, search a lot to find your product and the customer service is rude and you don't really know what you want, the packaging is really off, or do you go into an Apple store where there's a, like an employee in the front greeting you and taking you through the store and everything is really, really great design and you know where all the products are and you can see them and they're really, really well displayed and everything. And for obvious reason, everybody chooses the Apple Store. And that's basically the experience that we want to have online, right? So you push traffic to a landing page, you push, push traffic to a product page, and people can really easily understand the benefits, your value proposition, who you are as a brand, and why people should buy from you, right? Why shouldn't they buy from a competitor or, or whoever? But they need to buy from you, right? So they need to understand this the value proposition, product benefits, your USPs as a stores. And then on top of that, you also want to build trust, right? Because, um, and this is funny because usually it's intuition for people when they get on the store, they just know if it's a trustworthy store or if it's like giving off a scammy vibe, right? And you probably mm -hmm. notice from your customer experience buying off multiple different stores. You come on a store, you come on a website and there are certain elements that somehow create trust or give off like a scammy vibe. And some of those might be, for example, the trust badges or the reviews or social proof or other greatly designed elements that help create the trust. For on the other hand, there may be like big red pop-ups or some other elements or like those elements missing that then give off a scammy vibe, which won't let you into buying products from that store. Yeah. So that at the end of the day is conversion rate optimization, the whole process of optimizing user experience, user interface of your website and creating this trust and getting across value proposition and benefits for people to actually buy. And that also goes into the question of why should brands care about it? Because at the end of the day, um, your conversion rate and your average order value are two really, really important KPIs that will tell if you are profitable or not. So you can, with, with let's say you spend 5K a day on ads, and that can be um, on like a 2X ROS um, with like a 2% conversion rate. And then you increase the conversion rate to like 3%, which will directly increase your ROS to like a 3X ROS, which, will, which may make you highly profitable. And that's the whole um, output and outcome of conversion optimization and why brands should care about. Because it can be the, the change between you having... Um, like break even ROAS to you scaling highly profitable, for example. Yeah. If you uh, have, say, 100 is the goal in terms of how well optimized you are, 100 is the most optimized you could be for conversion rate, the store owner that just fires up a Shopify theme out of the box and just puts their product info in it, their brand info in it, but doesn't do anything more than that, where are they on that scale, would you say? Uh, probably at around a 30, <laughs> depends on how good Sheesh, the product really? description is. Um, yeah, well. Because when a Shopify theme is out of the box, it's really, really clean. So you're just pushing mm -hmm. into uh, it your images and your product text, right? And all these headlines, subheadlines, and some text. Um, but you're not really <laughs> utilizing any trust badges or upsells, cross sales, social proof, reviews, all of that sort. Um, uh -huh. So you really have to jump in and custom code all of that, for example, to do yeah. the heavy lifting of the CRO work. Yeah. Are there um, app solutions that can do the same thing as what you do with coding? Yeah, of course. Um, so there is, for example, gem pages or other page builder, uh, which lets you easily customize that. And there are also a bunch of apps. Um, I don't know all the names from my uh, top of my mind right now, but there are apps that let you um, showcase these trust badges. There are apps that help you like Zipify, one-click upsell, um, let you upsell or cross-sell products. Um, and there are also apps for like a sticky to cart button or like a custom card draw or one-page checkout. Um, usually we like to advise people to custom code everything just in regards to page speed because usually page builders and also apps tend to up the page speed a lot and slow down the page. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Okay. And so then what are the biggest mistakes brand owners are making aside from uh, ignoring conversion rate optimization when they try and improve conversion rate on their site and add badges, pop-ups, banners? You know, what are the biggest mistakes you see beginners make? 
Uh, that's a great question. I think the biggest mistakes you can make in this whole CRO process and journey with your brand and your store um, is relying too heavily on best practices. And they're like, I mean, there are no best practices after all, um, but there are certain things that tend to work across like 90, 95% of stores, which is everything related to increasing trust, like showing reviews, showing trust badges and showing store benefits. Like this will never decrease your conversion rate because like, why should it? Um, but then like they rely too heavily on that and they don't focus on what's really, really changing the needle, um, yeah. which usually is diving into the deep psychology of your audience. So really understanding what are their pain points, what are the motives, beliefs and desires, and also how are they interacting with your store? Like what is their customer journey throughout your store? Where do they click? Where do they scroll? And where do they spend time on a page? And it's really easy nowadays because we have Hotjar and they, they are basically providing you with these heat maps, click maps, scroll maps, and also these um, screen captures of your users. Mm -hmm. So you can just take a day, take two days, you and your team, and just watch all of those videos. Like we are pushing traffic to the landing page, then what do they do? They may scroll down, they may hover over certain images, and then they may jump off to like the home page. They try to find the about us section because they want to know more about the brand. Then they may jump to a product page, add to cart, buy the product, right? So you need to watch these videos to understand the individual customer journey that your target audience has on the store. And that's where the real value comes in. And then also, um, what I like to advise is send out customer service. So do surveys on page and send out customer service to your existing customer base. And with this, you can really understand, again, all the pain points, desires, motives that I just talked about. And you can understand what words are they using. Because you may be using different words than them for the same product benefit. But then you're not exactly hitting the pain point or you're not exactly hitting their desired state, right? And then small yeah. things can make the difference. Yeah, that's good. Uh, how much can these um, implementations move the needle, you know, in terms of conversion rate? What are some of the biggest moves you've seen in percentage? So one, one story that I love to talk about is from literally like the first client that we ever had. And he had a general dropshipping store, right? So the user Shopify theme, he had uh, products for dogs, for the kitchen, for uh, he had leggings and some gadgets, right? So like the typical general dropshipping store. And he had a 0.35% conversion rate. So his traffic was wow. really, really unprofitable. Like he didn't manage to scale, <laughs> obviously. Um, and then we jumped in, analyzed it, and understood really quickly that his best-selling product was the dog pad, right? Um, and then what we did, we pushed, we completely threw out all the other products that he had and completely rebranded the page to being a dog brand. So back, um, away from the general store to the dog brand, completely redesigned it, new logo, new CI, did the copywriting and then um, tell the story around the product and then really hit the pain points and the benefits of this product. So now he was pushing the same traffic to like the branded store for dog um, accessories or gadgets or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And that was then converting at a 2.7% conversion rate. So we nearly like wow. 10x the f conversion rate, uh, which was insane for us. Like I checked the Shopify dashboard every 10 minutes <laughs> because I couldn't believe it. Um, but that's how much you can move the needle. It can be completely like, um, difference between day and night. Uh, same with your ads. I mean, if you have like a, maybe an image ad or a carousel um, in comparison to like a 60 second UGC video, that can be the difference from day to night, right? And the same with your store. If your store looks like and has bad copywriting, like nobody will buy. But then if you have a really, really great position store with amazing value proposition, amazing benefits, really hitting the pain points and desires of your target audience, like obviously more people will buy from it. Yeah, no, that's uh, really interesting. And the uh, the takeaway I'm getting from it, obviously, is branding is important. You know, you're not just selling products, but the brand communication that you have. The, you mentioned the About Us page. Obviously, that's a lot of people will, will go there and having some kind of brand story. You have seen that to, to make an impact on conversion rate? For sure. Uh, so, again, depends on the niche and the product that you're selling. Um, but especially for, like, jewelry, apparel, 
and everything regarding to your pet, like when you're buying for your pet or for your baby or child or something, then they want to buy into the brand. And like, it's really, really heavy for, for example, like jewelry pages that they want to buy into the um, vision of the brand because they're not uh, buying uh, the jewelry for the main reason that it looks good, but rather for the emotion that it gives them, right? And like the brand story, brand vision. Um, it may doesn't matter that much for like gadgets or electronic accessories or something like that, or yeah. household gadgets. Um, but for all those luxury products, uh, tend to matter more. Yeah, nice. Uh, so we talked about some of the you know mistakes people make. Uh, what about some sort of quick wins uh, that people can implement? What are the first things that you would suggest to a beginner to fix? You may have covered them before, but just if you can sort of summarize, you know, uh, if you open up your Shopify store, you're running ads. These are the first three things I would do. For sure. Um, so to summarize. Um, Biggest thing, trust, increased trust. So show reviews, show happy customers, show the store benefits, uh, make it as easy as possible to buy and show the product benefits, right? So everything in regards to trust and social proof. Uh, second thing, reduce friction in the customer journey. And I see a lot of people doing this mistake is that it's really, really hard to buy from their store. I mean, Shopify uh, made it really, really easy, but if you're still using like WooCommerce, Shopware or any, any other system, they have like a really custom checkout that takes ages and has a, tons of friction, right? So you want to reduce friction, the customer journey from the product page, make it as easy as possible to buy, click the add to cart, and then quickly send them to the checkout. Um, that's the second biggest thing. And third biggest thing is um, having congruency between your ads and your store. Because you're grabbing the attention from the user that's just like scrolling to uh, through their phone on like TikTok or IG, Pinterest or whatever. You're grabbing their attention and they have the first interest. And now they're clicking on the ad to your store because they saw something in the ad that they like. Now you have to show the same imagery, the same copywriting and like the same offer, for example, on your landing page. Because what happens with a lot of people, they have one specific ad set. And then they push it to a product page, which has the same product, but everything else is completely unrelated, right? They may have like different colors, different visuals, and then people um, already forgot what they've seen in the ad, um, what they've seen in the ad, uh, because they may have just looked at it for like two seconds. And then they're on the product page, and then they cannot yeah. remind themselves again. And then they're just bouncing off instantly again. Yeah. Are you sending pretty much all traffic to a landing page, a custom landing page where people can buy the product? Yes. So we like to work mostly with landing pages or product pages. We have some people sending their traffic to a collection page, for example, for like the apparel and fashion brands. But most, mostly um, the traffic goes to product page or landing page. Yeah. And for product pages, do you recommend people, again, go with the structure of a Shopify theme or are you really heavy on building out full custom landing pages? Rather full custom landing pages. So uh, yeah. for me, landing page and product page is really, really similar. But the only difference is that on the landing page on, at the top, you show the value proposition and the copywriting rather than directly showing the product. And on the product page, you have the product at the top. And then in that sense, you have like all the other sections of the landing page, right? But it's essentially the same yeah. sections. Um, that's what we like to do. But I like to treat the product pages as landing pages in a sense that it's not only the product and a bit of text, but again, showing the product and news, showing the brand story and all of that. If someone um, wanted to get started with like coding their own sort of stuff like this into the store and didn't maybe want to use landing page builders and stuff like that, what are the kind of uh, point? What's the point at which that becomes worthwhile? You know, how much revenue does a store need to be doing to start really going deep into this stuff? I mean, a lot of the heavy lifting um, should be done in the beginning, obviously, because otherwise you won't be able to scale. Uh, so you really need to nail product market fit, value proposition, USPs and all of that and have a solid conversion mm. rate to be able to scale profitably. Um, yeah. But then where it makes sense to start investing time, money and energy into CRO um, is around the 100 to 200K mark of revenue a month. Um, yeah, sure. Obviously, if you're running at 100K a month with like a 5% conversion rate, you don't need to optimize. 
But if you're running at like 200K with like a 2% conversion rate, mildly profitable, then you should optimize. And then yeah. it enables you again to scale more aggressively. Yeah, that's good. And then finally, then uh, from uh, your agency perspective, what does it look like for someone to work with you sort of beginning to end? How uh, how much involvement do you have? Do you do everything for them in terms of pages, coding, that kind of thing? Sure. Uh, so in the beginning for the smaller brands, so we offer uh, just audits and consulting, right? So that we have them uh, help them do the heavy lifting or completely like rip apart the page, do the redesign and implement all the best practices, copywriting, so that they can scale the store up. Um, for the bigger brands, we like to jump in and really get into the psychology and do all of those micro changes with A-B test that you have seen on Twitter, right? So then we wouldn't completely tear apart a store that's doing like 10 million a month, but rather focus on like the small changes that we can do to incrementally increase conversion rate and average order value. Um, the way that we offer the service, it's a completely done for you service. Um, where we have these small unit teams with basically one full-time employee for every part of the process. So like data analysts, project managers, CRO strategists, um, designer, copywriter, and developer, so that we can take care of everything ourselves. Um, we like clients getting involved in the process just so that they can give their ideas, we can align the strategy and everything with them, but they wouldn't have to. Like we could even do everything on our own if they wouldn't like to get involved in the project. Yeah. Awesome, man. Are you, uh, are you enjoying the agency life? Yeah, I like it. At this point, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. In the beginning, it was a lot of hard work and hustle when you were still like a solopreneur when I was just starting out with my co-founder. Uh, now having a team, um, having like so much stuff happening uh, and being at this stage in the agency, it's really fun. Awesome, man. Awesome. Uh, I've, is there anything that I haven't asked that you think would be valuable to share? No, you have great questions. So um, nothing from me, from my mind. <laughs> no, that's all good. Uh, where's the best place for people to find out more about your agency and what you do? Um, best would be my Twitter because, as you said, like that's where most of the content happens and that's also where mm -hmm. I push most of the value. Uh, so just check out the Twitter, go through my timeline. I have a bunch of free resources, giving like so much stuff away for free. Um I would also send this to you so you can give it to the audience, like the landing page framework, for example. Mm -hmm. I just gave that away completely awesome. free to the yeah. audience so that they can have it. They can build landing pages themselves without needing to pay a CR agency or designer whatsoever. Um, yeah. And then if you have questions, just slide yeah. into my DMs on Twitter and then I will help you out. <laughs> <laughs> Simple as that. And I can... I can vouch that you answer them because I slid into there to ask you to come onto the show. Yeah, so sure. uh, I appreciate that. That's, <laughs> That's awesome, man. Uh, yeah, and we'll link some of those uh, A-B test kind of threads that you've done as well just so people can easily access those because they're super helpful. Um, Carl, thanks for taking the time out, man. I really appreciate your time. Uh, excited to see what you're doing and uh, you know, keep, keep tweeting the value because I'm enjoying it. For sure. Appreciate you so much for having me and hope you guys could take some value away from this. Absolutely. Awesome, guys. Welcome uh, or thank you for joining us for another episode and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Check all that stuff out for Carl in the description in the show notes below and, uh, and we'll see you in the next episode next week.